Hey everybody, welcome to the first house church video for our Christmas series, Trickle Up. I'm excited about this series because really what we're doing this Christmas is we're looking at how to position yourself so that you have the momentum of the universe behind you, so that you sort of have wind in your sails, you have um, flow and you're kind of going with the grain of the universe, the current, all those metaphors that have to do with you being propelled forward, not fighting against reality, but actually having reality back you. So that's, that's a pretty big topic. And we're going to be starting to tackle it this Sunday with the biggest possible uh, look. We're looking at like the cosmic trickle up. And then the next Sunday, we're going to be looking at the actual ancient trickle up, what happened with Mary and Jesus around the time of his birth. And then we're going to be looking at how Christianity trickled up through history. And then we're going to be sharing stories from Portage and Nipawa about what we'll call a present trickle up. Now that phrase trickle up is standing in contrast to the phrase trickle down. You may be familiar with the idea of trickle down where it's like if only somebody at the top could get their act together, if only they could have the right information, if only they could be a person of justice and kindness, then because they're so powerful, that would trickle down to all the like peons and the world would be a better place. I remember thinking about this like in junior high in youth group, we were like, oh, if only, and then you just name your celebrity, if they were a Christian, then like the whole thing would have credibility. And even today we have this idea that if uh, like Justin Trudeau got baptized in a really public way, oh, the ripple effects of that. Yet Canada just really, we had an evangelical Christian prime minister for however many years. Um, I've heard people my daughter's age say things like, oh, Taylor Swift's a Christian. And, and there's this idea that if a celebrity somehow validates or somebody in power becomes a Christian, the trickle-down effect is going to be stupendous and transformative. And oh, how great it would be like if Superman got saved is kind of the idea. Which is funny that we think like that. We think like that not because we're biblically informed. We think like that because we're culturally informed and culture fools us. The Bible actually tells us that it doesn't work that way. That if you want to strategically position yourself to be a transforming influence in the world, you try and go as lowly and as small and in almost like a humiliating a position as you possibly can. This is a little bit surprising, except when you start Looking at the Bible, it shouldn't be surprising. Jesus himself positions himself lowly, humbly, as a slave. We read all about that in Philippians 2. So I guess my question around this topic is, why do we miss it? How did we not see this in Scripture? There's things like, um, unless you lose your life, you're not going to find it. Jesus, when he's in the room with the disciples, he's not the big man. He's washing their feet. And then in the passage we looked at on uh, Sunday, he humbles himself to become not just a human being, but humbles himself to actual death on a cross. My question is really, how did we miss that? Because so much of our church culture is about trying to influence the influencers instead of actually the people that are like at the bottom. My light bulb moment, I think it's still pending, to be honest. I don't quite know how we've missed it. I think perhaps it's that we want to be people of status. And if we can influence people of status, then we get to be people of status. And the idea of us serving and being humbled and whatever the equivalent of a cross is in our life is just really not that attractive. So that's perhaps a light bulb moment. Another one might be that I trust Jesus as like a savior that he died on the cross for my sins, but I don't actually trust that his life is showing me what reality is like. Like maybe him becoming lowly from heaven and becoming like a servant and a slave is just sort of a one-off thing that God did, and it doesn't actually teach us how reality works, so maybe we're suspicious of that. So those are some potential uh, light bulb moments where it's like, okay, that's why it's like this. My conviction in all this, though, is more clear, and it's this. There is a real beauty to this idea because it gives each of us permission to be effective right where we're at, right? If, if it's a trickle-down universe, then we have to grasp at the rungs and the ladder to try to get to a place where we can have influence for Jesus. But we have a God who did not consider 
Jesus didn't consider equality something to be grasped, but rather let go of the ladder and went to the very bottom rung. And the ripple effects have lasted all through history, which means you don't have to grasp for superiority or status, but what matters is just loving the person right in front of you. This frees us up in, in kind of an interesting way to, to enjoy our lives even and to see them as effective because so many of us, I think, are characterized by lives that we would define as if only lives. We look at our memories and we're like, if only I had gone to university, if only I had taken this promotion, if only we hadn't bought that house, if only I wasn't in so much debt, if only I hadn't married this person, if only I had met that person. And all of that is really just grasping. If only I had grabbed the right rungs on the ladder to get to a place where I could be somebody. And then you have Jesus saying, no, it's just not like that. The pattern is actually from the bottom up. And so if you've missed a few rungs of the ladder along the way, that doesn't compromise your life or your effectiveness for Christ in any way. In fact, it actually makes you perfectly poised to make a tremendous difference. So you don't have an if only life. You have a beautiful life right now that lets you influence people for Christ and love them right where you are. That's the start of the Trickle Up series where Jesus establishes this cosmic pattern that God strategically positions himself at the bottom to make a difference and makes that pattern available for us where we are. Enjoy talking about that, enjoy the Christmas series, and remember it's a down week, so hopefully you're packing up hampers or doing something nice for people this season who need it most. Grace and peace, everybody.